In the Alien franchise, before the prequel films, there were a few comics that touched on the space jockeys, but none of them were as in-depth or as well received as Dark Horse's Aliens Apocalypse, The Destroying Angels. For many, it was their idea of what the lore of the Xenomorph and the space jockeys should be. Years later, Ridley Scott would bring us Prometheus and then Alien Covenant, and readers of Apocalypse couldn't help but notice themes and situations in the prequels that were very similar to the ones from the comic. Did the prequel film steal, or should I say borrow, from Apocalypse? We don't know for certain, but the similarities are there. And here are some of the ones that I saw from Alien's Apocalypse in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. In Prometheus, Holloway and Shaw discover all of these different paintings and inscriptions from different cultures from all around the planet that depict a similar scene with a tall figure pointing up to a group of stars. The engineers had been on Earth to alter or create mankind, and these star maps would lead them to LV-223. From there, on board an engineer juggernaut, David would use the orrery to locate Planet 4 and its engineer city. In the comic, a team funded by the Gilgod Institute discovers a strata of shale that contains xenomorph fossils that are 3.2 billion years old, but it's covered up. Dr. Keitel, now of the Institute, was originally with Weyland Yutani, where he learned of the Xenomorph from the Nostromo encounter. He's located a seemingly dead space jockey ship far away in space and has been working there, but all communication between the Doctor and the Institute eventually stops. So Lecto's team is sent into the derelict ship to find the Doctor. After exploring the vessel, they find a star map that they decipher enough to lead them to a space jockey city. I'd also note that the second, stranger-shaped derelict from Aliens Apocalypse is somewhat similar to the shape of the Mother Juggernaut that we see on Planet 4 from Alien Covenant. Both of these trips are financed by private, rich, and powerful groups, Wayland Corp and the Gil God, working to not gain the attention of other companies and conglomerates. Upon arrival to the planet with the space jockey city in the comic, they encounter an enormous hole in the ground. Wrapping around its edge is a spiral walkway leading down to where the city is located. For Alien Covenant, the main focus of the Engineer City, at least the part that we see, has a huge circular flat area in the middle of it, taking up much of the land, and in the middle of this is another circle, but it has an opening with four statues around it. Looking at the deleted scenes, we find out that this is a juggernaut hangar, with my point being that both cities are framed in or around circles. Upon inspection of the city, it seems to no longer have any living space jockeys, a similar situation that we encounter in Alien Covenant, where the Covenant's crew arrives on Planet 4 and David has seemingly killed off all of the engineers. At one point in the comic, Electo and her team are attacked by Xenomorphs, but they are rescued by a robed Dr. Keitel carrying an electric baton of some sorts. A scene very similar to when David, also in robes, saves the team as they are attacked by Neomorphs by using a flare in Alien Covenant. For both Prometheus and the comic, the teams initially think that all of the engineers and jockeys are dead, but in both takes, a survivor is found sleeping in stasis. In the comic, the jockey has been sleeping for 3.2 billion years, and is said to be barely alive. And for the movie, the last engineer has been asleep possibly for 2,000 years. The space jockey is awoken when a rogue Wayland yutani android places an alien ovomorph on it, creating a jockey xenomorph, a supersized version of the drone alien. The last engineer is also awoken, and then killed when infected by the trilobite, resulting in the deacon alien. It's not big like the comic version, but it was based on the engineer-born alien from John Spade's draft, which was an Ultramorph, a huge alien with a similar look to Giger's original Necronom 4 creature and to the comic alien. The android in the Aliens Apocalypse comic is named Val. Its head is torn off by an alien and it's reattached onto Deimos, the body of a Weyland yutani planet android. In comparison, David, a Weyland Corporation android, has his head torn from his body by the last engineer, and it's put back on by Elizabeth in Alien Covenant's extra, The Crossing. 
Bao warns the crew in Apocalypse that the body of Deimos might have hidden software that can take over his programming, which does end up happening. He then allows a crazy man onto their ship. On board, they have alien eggs, and this guy wants to be infected as it's the only way that he thinks he can live with the aliens. With no objection, Bal takes him to the Ovomorphs and watches as he's face-hugged. The captain of the ship walks in, surprised, and shoots the stranger with the alien on his face, but the thing jumps from the guy and onto him. Terrified, he struggles as Bal watches once more with a blank stare as the captain is subdued. Now David had ulterior motives as well, and we see a similar scene in Alien Covenant when he leads Orum to an area near his lab, where he's created his own ovomorphs. He tells Orum that it's okay to look inside one, and then gives the same stone-cold stare as the facehugger emerges and does its work. David would perform experiments on the crew of the Prometheus. He opened up the door to the ampule room without being asked to, and more importantly, he added a drop of accelerant to Holloway's drink just to see how it would react in a human, using a loophole type question to gain Holloway's approval. What would you be willing to do? Anything and everything. Dr. Keitel would do something similar in the comic, exposing willing individuals to Ovomorse so that he could create aliens for research. At one point in the comic, the android Bal is the team's lookout watching from a remote screen and of course, he shouldn't be trusted. At the climax of Alien Covenant, a Praetomorph or Protomorph is on the Covenant ship, and in similar fashion, David is watching over Daniels in Tennessee from a remote screen, and he also shouldn't be trusted. As an added bonus, outside of the comparison between the comic and the prequels, the theme of the Destroying Angels comic is that the aliens are an extermination force, a balance to the universe, and when a civilization starts to branch out into space, the aliens arrive and wipe them out. And if we look to the first run of the new Alien comic series from Marvel, we learn from an android who believes that the Accelerant and the aliens are the same thing, Prometheus's cleansing fire. She explains that when organic species grow arrogant enough to travel to the stars, they find it waiting, the fire that keeps the universe clean of all parasites like mankind. So how much of this, if any, ended up in the minds of the writers and the team behind the prequels? According to the writer of Aliens Apocalypse, Mark Schultz, when he was interviewed by AVP Galaxy, which I'll link to down in the description, the story he wrote is their property, referring to Fox and now 20th Century Studios, and they can do with it whatever they want. Personally, I think it's obvious that it had some form of influence, if not directly, perhaps indirectly, in how ideas were shared through the Alien fandom spawning other ideas that themselves may have found their way into the prequels in one way or the other. What are your thoughts on the many similarities between the comic and the prequels? Thanks for watching guys, and as always, your likes, shares, comments, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping the channel grow. Take care, and I hope to see you next time.